Hello and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live for February 24th, 2021. I'm Joe Lynch with me today for the Somerville City Council update, President and Ward 1 City Councilor Matt McLaughlin. Matt, welcome back. Hey Joe, thanks for having me. Very good. Matt, we are on a somewhat regular schedule now, uh, every two weeks. Lovely to see your smiling face every two weeks. Um, we have a city council meeting coming up tomorrow night, but as usual, why don't we uh, begin with you on a little bit on the COVID update? Yes, Joe, a uh, quick update on COVID, particularly on vaccines and uh, all the information I'm providing can be found on the city of Somerville website at somervillema.gov. Uh, so right now, people in phase two, group two of the state vaccines rollout can receive a vaccine. Uh, this includes people who are 65 and older uh, with two or more certain health conditions, and you can learn about that on the city's website, as well as, as, well as residents and staff of affordable senior housing. Uh, to book an appointment, you can go to mass.gov slash vaccine, or you can call 211 to get information on this. I know my family has done this, and it's uh, worked well enough. Um, and then the state also announced that anyone accompanying someone over the age of 75 uh, can also get the vaccine while they're there. So I encourage people to call 211. You can go to the City of Somerville's website, or you can call 311 for the City of Somerville, where we have people in multiple languages uh, to assist you during, with the vaccine process. So that's really all I have, Joe. Um, I'm open to any questions, but I really encourage people to check out the website and get the vaccine. Excellent. Excellent, Matt. Um, looking at the COVID dashboard for the city of Somerville this morning, I did notice that our positivity rate, uh, which indicates to us how fast it's spreading in our own community, or it's really predicated on the fact of how many people are getting tested. So the positivity rate in the city of Somerville is less than 1% at this point. Now, that should not give us false sense of security, um, and I couldn't agree more. We need to make plans to get vaccine, get the vaccine into our arms. Um, we need to abide by and follow the rules of what the state and the city are saying. Um, please, you know, for people who are not in the groups that are designated to get vaccines, please don't jump the line um, because it's not helping anybody. You may feel safe, but it's not helping anybody. So the vaccine distribution system here in the city of Somerville, for everyone's information, please try to remember this. It is dictated by the number of doses that the city of Somerville is being allotted by the state. The state's doses are being allotted by the federal government. So we cannot administer a vaccine that we don't have. How, how's that, Matt? <laughs> that sounds good, uh, but I'll give a little, I feel a little more positive about it because I think once the vaccine starts getting administered uh, and the federal government gets more doses, we're going to be on our way. I do think there, of course, been some hiccups, but I know people who have gotten the vaccine and are going for their second dose. Um, and once it's more readily available, I think we'll be good. I think the uh, positivity rate is a positive sign, and hopefully we can keep the numbers down while we get the vaccine. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel hopeful right now. Now, me and you both, Matt, we are hopeful. Um, vaccination sites, you had mentioned that. We talked about it the last time you were in uh, because we do not have um, the number of doses that we would like here in the city. We really don't have set up at this point mass vaccination sites in the city of Somerville. Um, but as you mentioned, 211 for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, that appointment system seems, seems, I don't want to promise, seems to be working a little better than it did last week. So moving ahead, we will keep you updated on any of the sites that the city is thinking about in terms of its um, general population vaccination. Um, once again, I want to mention that the CVS in Magoon Square does have a piece of their store uh, cordoned off for administering the vaccine, but they do not have that running at this point. So yeah. check the state's website, check the city's website for any further information. Matt, one huge issue that came to light last week was the Somerville School Committee on which you sit as the president of the board of, of sorry, the president of the city council, um, 
signed and executed the memorandum of agreement with the teachers union uh, about how they will go back to school. That date for the roll in uh, piece by piece, phase by phase has been set for March 4th. Any further updates since that news last week? Well, I am sure people have seen on the state level that the governor has announced that he would like to reopen schools K through eight uh, by April. So that's a little different than what our plan was. And our plan, uh, while it is a reopening, is only a reopening for uh, certain students. And there seems to be a much larger plan in place. Uh, so that is the most recent update. I'm happy that we reached a negotiation, an agreement with the union. Um, but, and hopefully it seems like if things clear up, maybe we can have more students back and uh, get back on track. There's one issue there, Matt. I did a little bit of research just before we came on air. The CDC seems to be, and not, not in ambiguous terms, they seem to be promoting the fact that teachers should be prioritized in terms of the vaccination. What's our thoughts here in Somerville? Well, I'll tell you my thoughts as they should. And my, my attitude has always been outside of people with pre-existing conditions, people over a certain age uh, who are all more susceptible um, physically to the disease. To me, the next line should be first or for, and first responders, of course, uh, the so-called essential workers, the people who have to be on the job when they work. And that's not just teachers. It's all these jobs that we take for granted uh, that people have to physically go to their job regardless of the pandemic and we you know held them on a pedestal and talked about how said they we call them essential uh we should give them a priority for the vaccine uh, and people wonder why people of color are uh, disproportionately affected by this disease even though there's no genetic reason for that to be the case it's because people have to work regardless so I do think it'd be great if we could prioritize teachers for the vaccine because it'll help the students as well and it'll help society as a whole. And I also think restaurant workers and people working in offices that they can't work from home, anybody who really is deemed essential should get this essentially. Um, was the uh, vaccination of the Somerville Public School staff slash teachers, educators, was that part of the memorandum of agreement? I can't remember, to be honest, but I do know that it's going to be a priority. Uh, yes, it was actually part of the memorandum is prioritizing vaccines for them when we get it. Uh, and it also, the memorandum also has uh, testing twice a week. So students and teachers will be tested twice a week for the vaccine. And there's a whole metrics uh, set up to determine if the COVID was to somehow spike, uh, how we would close in that situation. Uh, and so it's very, very complicated, yeah. Yeah, and we have decided, I think um, either you or chair of the Somerville School Committee relayed that information to me last week. We have decided to go with um, group testing uh, yes. for the school kids themselves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah because if, if any, uh, yeah, it, it, the concept basically being, you know, if you test a group and one person's sick, then that's as good as everyone being sick. So you make the assumption yeah 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 okay all right anything else on that matt at this point uh nothing on that front it, it's long process i wish it happened faster but i'm glad that we're seem to be getting back to some kind of normal well my nickname being curmudgeon i do want to um have a cautionary tale here matt that we are ramping up production of the vaccine we are ramping up administration of the vaccine. We're ramping up to try, all of us who care about each other are trying to get back to some semblance of normalcy. But I just wanna make a statement that I read this morning, Dr. Fauci gave an interview uh, late last week talking about when does he think we can get to a, an acceptable level of non-transmission of this thing in a widespread wildfire kind of way. His cautionary tale is saying, based on what, how we're administering that vaccine globally today, some countries obviously are doing much better than we are. Um, 
but he is given a warning, and I trust Dr. Fauci, saying you're looking at anywhere between three and four years for this planet that we call home to have some type of control rested this thing down to the ground where you have 80% of the world's population who can be safely vaccined and eradicate this thing. So when people start thinking, um, I've got a vaccine, I got my second dose, my, my grandkids, I'm a, it's okay for me to go back to some semblance of normal. Please be very careful, my, my opinion. Please be very careful with that mode of thinking. So um, well, anyway. I, I trust Dr. Fauci and his opinion. Uh, he knows more than me. I'll just say that once we, once we get this vaccine out, I think people are going to at least feel a lot better and we'll have some semblance of control. For, for our mental health, I, I think you're right. Yeah. For our physical health, I'm still going to trust Dr. Fauci. So when, he's, when he says, Lynchy, you got two shots or, you know, Johnson and Johnson now has a vaccine that they think can only require one shot because of its efficacy. Um, when Dr. Fauci says, you know what, Joe, if you got your shots and you can prove it with your vaccination card and your loved ones have their vaccination, two doses, one doses, whatever it is, and I can go back to hugging those people. But I'm going to give fair warning, Matt. No hugs for you unless you can prove you've had the vaccine. Joe, I don't think I've seen you in person in more than a year. So <laughs> that's an easy promise to keep. There you go. Um, and I just say, you know, I, you know I, I trust doctors like Dr. Fauci. I trust scientists. Uh, one of the concerns is the people who don't trust doctors and don't trust scientists and believe that this vaccine is something other than what it's not. And as you said, uh, in order for you to hug your grandchildren, your grandchildren have to have vaccines as well. Uh, and the, the, this idea that, you know, you can just make the independent decision to knock at the vaccine and that's your choice, it impacts everybody around you. Um, the vaccines only work if enough people get them. And you see things like, uh, what's the, like smallpox and things like this that were dead diseases for a long time. People stop getting the vaccine and they start appearing, even though everyone else has the vaccine. So this is a uh, the same people who preached about herd immunity are now concerned about uh, getting the vaccine. The herd immunity applies to vaccines as well. Well stated, Matt. You know, all I can say is I can relate this to something in my my own personal life is that if you can't prove to me that you are uh, that you've received the vaccine, you're not going to hug me. Yeah. Right? And it goes back to, we. this is not new, that type of prove it mentality when it comes to vaccines. Years ago, when I, I had booked myself to a trip to South Africa, I had to get certain vaccines in order to enter that country, right? And to allow me to come back to this country. So don't be too surprised if the federal government says, if you're going to travel overseas or other countries will say, Prove to us that you've gotten the COVID vaccine, vaccine then you can come in. Um, I'm of the opinion that vaccines have done nothing but good for humanity as a whole, and people should get that vaccine. And you're right, the, the, this idea that this is something new, it's like vaccines have existed for a long time. Uh, it's the reason we have such a high standard of living in the world, uh, and in America in particular. And yes, you have to get vaccines when you go to places that have diseases that you might catch. So it's common sense to me. I, I wanna spread that common sense around. Well, for those people who, who I hear from intermittently saying no way they're gonna get the vaccine, I say thank you for your contribution to society as a whole. <laughs> well, what concerns me, especially with that attitude is that it's not coming from people who have been sheltering in place the entire time and put their life on hold. Um, there's generally people who have ignored all the warnings and the people who have not ignored those warnings uh, are very much about the vaccine. So I, I think we, people need to get the vaccine. It's, and it should not be a force issue. It should be open and willingness to uh, get society. I, I don't know how people have lived through the past year and we have a shot that will stop that from happening and people don't want to do that. So 
They don't want I to call encourage everyone. Please call 211 and register for the vaccine. Yep. Information lines are open here in the city of Somerville as well. Call 311 if you have questions about um, any of the COVID related programs that we have up and running. Matt, I want to move into your agenda for yes. tomorrow night, if you will. Um, noticing some of the things that were on the finance committee last night, um, it appears as though the city is following through with their commitment to um, refund some of the stabilization funds that we had in the city. I, I, I don't mean to say it like this, but let me do it because I'm Joe Lynch. So last year, in order to um, assist many aspects of our population with food programs, housing programs, uh, business con continuity programs, we had taken a lot of money out of the rainy day funds or the stabilization funds and put those into local COVID related initiatives. Um, the director of finance last night at the finance committee said, we have our free cash certified by the state. We're not gonna stop putting that money back into those stabilization funds. Is there any update in terms of, of if things get worse, I hate to be on the downer side of it. If things get worse, well, are we gonna to have to go back to those stabilization funds for additional programs? I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I think that's the road we're going to have to pass when we get there. Uh, it was kind of an unprecedented move for us to approve that $5 million. Uh, that should not have been money that the city had to spend. That should have been state and federal funds assisting us. And we took that unprecedented measure because we weren't getting the assistance needed. Uh, so going for another $5 million, it's like we, we, are full, we are a fortunate city, but we are not really a rich city. Um, by those standards. And this money comes from somewhere, it comes from the taxpayers. And we can't, unlike the federal government, we can't take out a loan and never pay it back. Uh, we, we have to balance our budget. So I'm not saying no, but I'm saying that it was, it was a big move for us to do that to begin with. So I don't, hope we don't have to go there. Well, from what I could glean from the, the finance committee meeting last night, it was a successful program. We took money out, we utilized it for the community, and now we're putting the money back in to those well, reserves. In some ways, it was more successful than state and federal funding because there were no restrictions on how we could use it. Uh, so a lot of small businesses were unable to get grant money, uh, because, and a lot of arts programs weren't able to qualify for funding because they didn't meet state and federal guidelines. So I, And then we also, I think there was an article in the paper about how unbalanced some of the funding was. A lot of the money went to Union Square specifically. And I think the city has addressed that issue as well. That's a lottery system now instead of a, uh, you know, instead of a committee deciding who gets it. So I, I think we've made good steps in terms of spreading the money around and making sure people get what they need. Great. There is a new round of grants coming out of uh, economic development and the arts council. So I would encourage any of the small businesses that are listening to us on this program, please go to the city website, check it out, see what's available for you. Matt, any sense whatsoever about revenues so far in the city? Are they up, down, flat? What's happening? I have to look at the numbers again, but I mean, revenue has definitely been down because of uh, one, not only property values or businesses unable to pay taxes, residents unable to pay rent um, and things like that. It's also, uh, we didn't collect money for tickets for traffic issues and for inspectional service issues for a long time. Uh, so revenue did take a hit. Fortunately, we did have, we do have a pretty large rainy day fund. So we were able to weather the storm. But as we said last budget season, uh, this budget season would be when we really felt the hit. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to see what happens this budget season. But uh, we're, we're stable, but this has definitely had an impact. Uh, COVID has had an impact on everybody. How about expenses? I know our expenses have gone up, but a lot of that is reimbursable from the federal or the state system. Are, are, yeah, we, so, some are of we hiring it. more people in the city? Uh, I haven't seen any new hires lately. So, and with this, there's been some hires that we've been waiting to get uh, that haven't been hired yet. So I'd have to look at, uh, you know, the, the request for personnel lately. 
that usually a lot of that either comes up in a midterm appropriation or during the budget season itself, uh, which is in June. So I know we've had the mayor's hired a few people with his funds uh, to address COVID and things like that. But uh, in terms of hires or layoffs, uh, we haven't seen anything uh, substantial yet. Okay. Raises? Anybody at City Hall get any raises this year? Yeah, a few people got raises. Uh, Non-union management positions got uh, incremental raises, which I felt were justified. Okay. All right. So expenses may be ticking up a little bit. Revenues either flat or going down. That is an accountant's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Matt, anything else? We're, we're creeping up on, uh, we've got about a minute and a half, two minutes left. What have you got free, freestyle there? Um, geez, I'm, I, I feel generally positive today, Joe. So uh, people ask me how I'm doing and I tell them that it depends on what hour you're asking. So at this hour, I feel pretty good. Uh, the vaccine, yeah, I, I, I wanna say that a lot of people have been upset about the rollout from the governor with the vaccine and those feelings are totally justified. The governor has uh, dropped the ball in some sense, but I'm reminded that uh, the Obamacare website crashed on its first day and there were a lot of problems with that program and it's become a very important program for Americans. So sometimes government doesn't work the way it should and I hope that we're moving in the direction of getting it to work. So once this vaccine is readily available to people, uh, we're going to be administering it, and I just encourage people to get it. Um, and and uh, enough with the online uh, hoaxes. Vaccines are good things. They are good things, and luckily we have an administration in Washington um, that believes in science yeah. Yeah, and, and believes listens to Dr. Fauci and, and listens to Dr. Fauci. Exactly. Yeah. I said it at the beginning when that guy started coming on TV. That's the one that I'm going to follow. Uh, the talking heads at CNN, the talking heads at the White House, the press secretaries, the communications people, I didn't have any faith in them. So yeah. um, let's put it this way, Matt. I understand how you want to be positive. And I'm sorry, I'm going to apologize to you because I know on Wednesdays you come in here with positivity. You come in and try to Present not the always, not always. And then when you leave this show, I bring you right down again. So my <laughs> apologies. <laughs> I'm a cynical person by nature. So if I'm positive, then people should feel pretty good. No, I think what, what we try to do on these programs, Matt, is to balance out what people are hearing in the local papers or local social media versus what they're getting across the state, what they're getting across the feds. And it always helps to have somebody who's in the thick of the conversations like yourself to understand where we are in the larger scheme of things. So, yeah, you know, we do appreciate you put a lot of time and effort into these shows with us. Um, but I did get a tap from Lance Davis saying, you know, if he, if he ever can't make it, Lance will be perfectly happy to come in. Uh, I've invited Lance several times, so he's more than welcome to uh, jump in. <laughs> and uh, I do, I do not need to do this every me every uh, week. I'm more than happy to share the love. All right, with your kind permission, I'll, I'll do an outreach to your colleagues and say, look, we got to give President McLaughlin a little break on Wednesdays. I'm bringing him down. I'm bringing the poor guy down. Oh, uh, you don't bring me down, Joe. That's I, I do a good enough job on that myself. So, Matt McLaughlin. Running out of time here. Thank you so much. Um, from the Somerville Media Center, I'm Joe Lynch. Thank you for joining us. Please stay safe, stay informed. We'll see you next time. Thank Get you, Matt.